Okay, uh, we're back on the practice field this week uh, after a week of finals. Um, our players have been very excited to get back out there. Uh, we focused on our young guys pretty much so far, uh, trying to keep our older old guys uh, fundamentally sound. We'll transition into uh, Florida State later in the week, uh, but overall, the, I really like their attitude and uh, their willingness to get better. Um, on another note, very excited that uh, we signed three junior college players today. Uh, starts with the number one player in junior college, Dequil Williams, a wide receiver from uh, Gulf Coast Community College. Dynamic player, can run, catch, do all the things it takes to be a great receiver. Uh, uh, offensive lineman Xavier Dampier from Kapai Lincoln, got the ability to play center. Guard, uh, just a big, strong kid. And then safety, Derek Moncrief. Uh, from Gulf Coast Community College, a big physical guy that can tackle and has uh, very good uh, cover skills. So uh, that's what's happened this morning, and uh, we've got to practice later on this afternoon. Questions? Coach, uh, two of the four Heisman Trophy finalist quarterbacks uh, you guys have played and beat. How do you think uh, facing A.J. McCarron, Johnny Manziel, or even Aaron Murray has helped you prepare for uh, James Winston? I know they're different. Well, you're exactly right. We have faced some dynamic quarterbacks. Uh, they're all a little bit different, but uh, won a lot of games. So I hope that will help us. Uh, obviously, we're playing the Heisman Trophy winner, uh, the best player in college football, so we got our work cut out for us. But anytime you play other good quarterbacks, it's got to help you. Yeah, when we signed him, we knew he was a good athlete. Um, you know, uh, just transition that over to the quarterback position. And, you know, I think you can see that once he gets out in space and one-on-one situations, he's extremely hard to tackle. And uh, he's, he's very tough. You know, he's a very good athlete, but he's very tough. Uh, and he's really impressed us this year. Coach, can you talk about how Trey Mason developed his running back in the season as well? It's a great performance. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it's – Trey has, has gotten more confident each game. I mean, he was pretty confident coming into the year. Uh, we knew he was a very solid run back. Uh, and it just seems like he, you know, he started playing his best football when we played our best opponents. And really won the ball, uh, a lot of hard yards between the tackle, uh, just was a true physical presence and uh, got better. And he's playing his best ball right now. And, uh, you know, we'll need another great effort from him this next game. You guys hit a lot in the spring. How much did that help you going forward and instilling the, the kind of attitude you want, especially on the offensive line? Yeah, in the spring, you know, we were as physical as we could be, uh, you know, every day. And we just felt like it was very important that we got our edge back. And we were very physical in fall camp, too. And, uh, you know, we were a little banged up going into the year, but we just felt like that's what we needed. That's who Auburn is. And uh, we're probably the only team in the country that actually let our quarterbacks go live in the fall, too. And uh, so that really helped us get where we're at. And uh, that's who we are. When you say who Auburn is, how did you determine that philosophy? Is it something you figured out when you were here the yeah. first time? Yeah, when I was here before. You know, Auburn's a blue collar, hard nosed, uh, you know, physically and mentally tough. That's who we are. And that's how we win football games here. And uh, that's how they've done it. For a long time, and we just felt like that was the one thing we had to get back, and that's what we focused on. When you talk about the offensive line, you just put numbers up like you have uh, the running game. You got to have an offensive line that wins in the trenches. Yeah, you know, we knew going into the season our offensive line was going to be one of our strengths, and uh, they got better and better. Uh, started to gel. Coach Debbie Grimes did a wonderful job with them. Uh, you know, the unique thing is we're fairly deep. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of depth there. I mean, anytime you have depth, it creates competition. And, uh, and we've stayed pretty healthy up front, too. I think that's a big factor. But, you know, anytime you can run the football and people know you're going to run the football against the defenses that we had, uh, that we went against, uh, the offensive line deserves a lot of credit. Is there, other than being in this game before, is there any better preparation for the DCS championship game than this Iron Bowl, the way that was, and then the SEC championship game? Yeah, I think, you know, I think if you look at our entire schedule, um, you know, I'd like to think we're battle tested. We've been in some uh, some true dogfight games. Uh, we've been in some 
games where the pressure was on at on the road, at home, and our guys have responded. And uh, you know, in big games, I know they're not going to panic. And uh, so I, I got to believe that that'll help us uh, moving forward. With Jonathan Blind and Reese, how has he kind of evolved as a leader from his freshman year until now? Reese. Yeah, Reese is one of our overall team leaders. Um, you know, him and Chris Davis go out uh, for one blips as our team, team captains, you know, each game. Uh, but he's a leader in practice. He's an extension of his coaches. He demands that uh, the other offensive players practice at a high level. And uh, that's what it takes. I mean, to have a championship type team, you've got to have leaders that uh, really raise the bar for the rest of their teammates. It can't just be coaches. Because Florida State leads the nation in interceptions. You commented the other night on their speed across the board, but just can you comment on, on what you see as a challenge going up against their secondary? It's obviously, just so good against the pass. Yeah, they're extremely fast. Their defensive backs, you can tell, have very good ball skills. Um, and then they've had the ability to get big leads on people and make them throw the football. And, uh, you know, when, when they know that you're going to throw it, uh, they're very good at it. What is it about Marcus Joyner that makes him such a top end? Back. Yeah, he's just he tackles well. <coughs> he plays very good uh, on the last scrimmage, near the last scrimmage. He covers well. You know, he's just one of the top top players defensively in the country. What, Coach, what, what do you know about Jeremy Pruitt? Jeremy Pruitt's an old high school coach, and uh, you know, I've got a chance to coach against him a couple times when he was at Alabama. Um, talked to him numerous times. Got a lot of respect for him. You know. The, High school coaches kind of stick together a little bit. Coach, how much is Trey a throwback? You talk about wanting the ball. That's kind of how guys were. Yeah. I know you have to share the ball more now, it seems, but how much is Trey a throwback to that fact that wanted the ball? Well, he's got some old school in him, there's no doubt. Uh, he's a tough guy. Um, you know, wants the ball. You know, anytime you've carried the ball 40 plus times, he still wants it. And I've said this before, I think we could have given it to him 10 more times if the game was on the line. As a matter of fact, I know we could. That sounds a little crazy, but that's his mentality. And uh, he's got a great passion to win, to want to win. And, uh, you know, he's a big reason why we're here. Gus, can you talk about signing the number one wide receiver in the country? Uh, I guess that was a challenge considering how much you guys ran the ball this year. Well, this year, but if you look back, you know, we've, we've had years where we throw it a lot. And, you know, we're going to get more and more balanced, uh, you know, next year. Anytime you got a dynamic guy like him coming, that's a really good thing. Coach, in the end of the season, you talked about Jay being one of the best of each position that you've ever coached. How has he given that to you throughout the entire season? Well, you know, of course, I coached with JB last year. Of course, you know, he's no Arkansas guy, so we go way back, and I already knew him pretty well. But uh, he's one of the best teachers that I've ever been around. Uh, you know, with the toe is two inches too wide, he's not happy. I mean, he's very specific. Uh, he's got a knack um, that he has great relationships with his players. They respond to him. Um, he's one of the best in the country.